for the roof of this building, I'm going to use a flat brush and a dark gray because it'll stand out from the rest of the trees. So I think it needs to be a purpley gray. So there we go. Purple gray. Need to be careful that I don't run over that. So, or this. So I'm going to put my, I'll put a little box here. As I mentioned before when I was doing this drawing, it's a very odd shaped roof, but it's what it is, so there you go. Wind's really kicked up again. There's some white caps in the water and I could add those with some gouache or I could add them with a white crayon. Right now I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to, I'm good with my rocks. I'm good with the background. I might add some more uh, trunks, but I'm not going to do it right now. I'll wait to see how I feel about this overall look. Um, I don't like this hard line going the wrong direction, so I'm going to erase that. This is a wet brush. I'm just erasing that distracting vertical that's coming right through here. Okay, um, I think I'll take a fan brush. I don't use the fan brush a lot, but for this vegetation, I think it might be helpful. Okay, I'm gonna get a nice green, water it down some. I'm going to lay in a base of green. You remember I said these came from almost a center uh, core, these uh, plants, whatever they are, and then kind of spring out. And a fan brush gives you an opportunity to suggest the way the vegetation is growing, which is kind of nice. I like putting a lot of different pressure on my fan brush. You don't want every stroke to look like it's the same and it gets very repetitive. So you want there to be a natural look to what's happening here with the vegetation. I'm gonna stop and fix some of the details happening in the vegetation. So I'm going to take advantage of some of this area where I can put in some darks. Gosh, that's drying fast. It's really interesting. It's just drying as soon as I put it down. Normally, if I were painting inside of the studio, I'd have maybe five minutes to work with this. And you can see I, boy, I came back within, gosh, like 30 seconds or something, and it was already dry. The fun of painting and the challenges of plein air painting. That's why it's so great. You always need to be on your toes.
I'm gonna have some of these, some of these go really high. And so I'm gonna put some of them high. And again, I'm gonna add some darks here, but <laughs> hopefully it's not so dry that <laughs> it won't uh, fill in in a natural way. Again, this would be an example of negative painting, where by painting this mass at the bottom, I'm actually accenting some of these uh, rushes at the top of their, the, the heads of the rushes instead of the base of the rushes. I hope you see how this, adding these darks, to the fan brush work, to me at least, it makes it look more natural. I think just fan brush alone, um, again, it's a technique that can be overused and is, it's kind of obvious as a technique and I don't like to do it too much. Okay, I'm getting really pleased with how these are looking. I'm gonna stop now and add a little bit more detail to my path. Mm, too much paint, not enough water. A lot of different color in this sand, so I just want to add some variation so it doesn't look too um, repetitive. That was a little too orange, so I'm adding some duller brownish green to it so it's not too bright. I don't want any one piece of sand to be so bright it's going to take away from everything else going on. Okay, I'm going to take my flat, actually I'm going to take a watercolor pencil and these on the dock, there are some vertical posts. So I'm taking a watercolor pencil, I dipped it in my water, I hope you can see that, so it's wet. So it's not going to give me a sharp pencil line, it's going to give me a wet, like a watercolor line. And I'm going to wait a minute on that because this isn't quite dry. So I'm going to put my pencil down, I'll go back to my flat brush, I mean, excuse me, my fan brush, add a few more. Mm -hmm. Things are drying so fast. adding some more dark here. It was too hard to see where the weeds started and the rock ended. So I'm making a better line 
so we know what's rock and what's weed. Remember I said there was a tree over here? Um, and I'm going to make that kind of yellowish. I think I'll add that now. I'm going to move it over a little bit. You can see how the yellow will stand on top of the green. Yellow does not play well with its neighbors, and you can definitely use that to your advantage. I'm going to make the trunk a little bit more brown because it's against the sand. blue to this so it's still darker than the rock okay I'm gonna go add the my watercolor pencil to the dock We are about done with this painting. It's been fun. I've enjoyed working on this painting. I'm going to add little buttony kind of things there. I'm going to add some darks between some of these two by fours on the dock. I'm going to add a little bit of dark here. going to loosen that up. That seems a little tight, it's a little straight for everything else going on here. So again, I'm just taking some water and going over it and making it more smeary so it doesn't stand out so, mm, so straight with everything else, much more freehand. Okay, and um, I think I'm going to stop now and I might come back to it later. I'm not sure if I like the proportions between this tree and this dock. I do like the trees across here, so I'll probably wait for it to dry and maybe I'll work on it a little bit later, but it's pretty much done. Thanks for joining me. I had so much fun working on this painting with you. I'm Jane M. Mason. Have a good afternoon.